Hi there, this is Terry from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today's project is this lovely card holder. Inside there are six cards and envelopes, but there's plenty of room for more if you want to add some more. The images come from the Over the Moon stamp set and I've used the reflection or mirror image technique to create a cow facing in the opposite direction. I've also used a little masking technique to remove the udders on the second image. So I've got a male and a female cow. Now because the envelopes used in the US are shorter than the envelopes that we use here in the UK, there is a slight difference in measurements. So let's get started. I'm using crumb cake cardstock. If you use A4 as your basic size card, you want to cut this to seven and three quarter inches by 11 and a half inches. Now, if your basic cardstock size is eight and a half by 11, you want to cut this to seven and three quarter inches by 11 inches. So it's just a little bit shorter. Now I've placed it into my Simply Scoreboard with the short side across the top and I'm going to score down at one and a half inches from each side edge. Then I'm turning my cardstock and I'm going to score down at three and a half inches and five inches. And that's it, the scoring is complete and it's the same for whichever size card you use. If you look at your scored mat now, you will see two horizontal score lines and they are the bottom part of your holder. Now on the top part, we want to mark down where we want to slant cut the sides. Now, if you um, started with an A4 piece of card, you want to mark down on each side at three inches. But if you were cutting down from an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of card, this measurement needs to be two and a half inches. So for UK, it's three inches, US, it's two and a half. Then we're going to cut from that mark up to the top of the vertical score lines. Now you can use scissors or a trimmer to do your cutting. I prefer to use a guillotine. So I'm just lining the blade up with the top of that vertical score line and my pencil mark. So it's going to cut on a diagonal. And then I'm going to do the same for the other side. So this is what your cardstock should now look like. Now the next thing we're going to do is to create tabs on this middle section. So where you see the scored squares. So you want to do a straight cut and then cut into that square at a diagonal. So again on the other side, a straight cut first and then cut into that little square at a diagonal. So you're just notching the sides and repeat for the opposite side. Then you can go ahead and fold on all the score lines and burnish the folds with your bone folder. I'm going to use the Stamparatus to do my stamping and I'm using the Over the Moon stamp set, this cute cow image. I'll also be using the little heart in the thought cloud a bit later. So I'm placing my stamp set under the acrylic plate, to keep the plate level. This makes it much easier to ink up your stamps. This Whisper White card measures four and three eighths of an inch by three and one eighths of an inch, which is 11.1 centimeters by 8.1 centimeters. And I've just used a ruler and a pencil to draw a line down the center. The line is just there to help me place the cow image onto each half of the cardstock. I'm going to pick up the image with my plate and then I can remove the cardstock. 
The silicone mat is the best thing to use when you want to do the mirror image technique. Now I'm going to ink up my stamp and stamp it onto the silicone mat three times. Then I'm going to very carefully place my Whisper White cardstock over the image. You don't want to smudge the ink. And then just stamp the image down once more. And what you're looking at now is going to be the reverse of the cardstock. So when I turn it over, I've got my cow, but he's facing in the opposite direction. I can now remove the silicone mat and replace my cardstock into the Stamparatus. Now I want to make this second cow into a male so I don't want to stamp the udders. So I've inked up my stamp and then I'm just going to take a Q-tip dipped in just a tiny bit of water just to remove the ink on the udders. Then I'm going to use the other end just to dry it off as much as I can. Now, if I was to stamp this down now, you would still find a little residue of ink left there. So what I want to do is just mask off the udders. And I'm using a little bit of sellotape or scotch tape, I think you call it in the USA. And I'm covering the udders with it. Then I'm just removing my board and huffing on my ink just to make sure it's nice and moist still, it hasn't started drying. And then I can replace the plate and stamp the image. I want to position the little heart in the thought cloud between the two cows. So I'm just going to do a dummy run first of all to make sure I've got the placement correct. So to do this, I'm going to use a piece of acetate that will cover my images and protect them. Then I can position my heart where I think it should go and pick it up with the plate. Then I can ink it up and stamp it down onto the acetate. And then just check that it's where I want it to be. And I was quite happy with this. So then I can remove the acetate, ink up my stamp again and stamp it down onto the card. I'm using the Stamping Blends alcohol markers to colour my images. And I'm starting with the light petal pink. So I'm going to do the front of their faces, the udders and the inside of the ears. Then I'm going to switch to Poppy Parade and I'm starting with the light and covering the entire heart. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of the dark before blending again with the light. Next I'm going to start with the boy cow and I'm using soft suede. So the hooves, the patches on the body, the end of the tail, the nostrils and the hair will all be coloured in the dark. And then the main part of the head and the body will be in the light. And now for the girl cow, I'm switching to the crumb cake markers. And again, I'm using the dark 
for the same areas that I used the dark on the boy and then I'll fill in the head and the body with the light. And then just to finish off my colouring, I'm going to use the Light Pool Party Blends Marker and I'm going to go around the whole image using this pen and this really makes it pop. Then I'm going to run this through the die cutting machine using the subtle embossing folder. And this is how it looks after it's been embossed. Now I have a mat here in Poppy Parade and this measures four and a half inches by three and a quarter inches, which is 11 and a half centimetres by eight and a half centimetres. And I'm just going to add glue and layer these together. The panel can now be added onto the front of the card holder. I always like to do this if possible when it's still flat but just make sure you get your panel up the right way. So I'm just going to add glue and then position it into place. Right, I can now put this together. I'm going to start by adding glue to the two small tabs and this is on the inside. Then I'm going to position each of these tabs onto the back panel side sections. And you just want to make sure that that corner is nice and square. And here you can see that those little tabs are on the outside of the box. Then we're going to fix the front side sections over them. So those little tabs are sandwiched in between and you won't be able to see them from the inside or the outside. So next you want to add glue to the front side panels, the inside. And I like to take my glue right to the edge some people just put a squiggle in the middle, but that's not me. I don't like to get any lift at all. OK, so then you can position those again on the outside of the box. And then if you take your bone folder, you can just give everything a nice press down to make sure it's secure. I just realised here that I'd forgotten to draw in the eyelashes that I wanted to add to my girl cow. So I'm using my stamping right marker in basic black, the fine tip end, and I'm just drawing the eyelashes. Now this is best done before it's embossed, obviously. So here is the completed card holder. Now I've got six envelopes to go inside, and I've got six cards, most of which you've already seen on my blog or in other videos. This next two were the two I created with masking using the Stamper Artist and then the next two are the stack of cows that I created without any need for masking and then finally I created an additional card to match the holder itself.
Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.